Hey guys, uh, what I'd like to do right now is the polar coordinate derivation for acceleration and for velocity. All right, so let's check it out. Um, where we start with is a point moving in space, and usually we can just label that point in Cartesian coordinates x and y, um, but in polar coordinates we use r and theta. So what we'd like to do is express now the acceleration and the velocity in terms of r, theta, and the unit vectors ir and i theta, which point in the increasing direction of each quantity. So ir points in the increasing direction of r, i theta points in the direction of greatest increase for i theta. Okay, for theta. So, from this picture, we can draw yet another picture where we have IR and I theta that we're going to focus on. And the place to really start in this derivation is saying, well, what does acceleration and velocity mean? And saying, well, velocity, for example, is the derivative of position with respect to time. So I have to take the position vector in polar coordinates and take its time derivative. However, we know if we've done this derivation before that we got to do some preliminary calculations to help us aid the derivation. So I'd like to do those preliminary, preliminary calculations first. So this angle is theta from the diagram. And how can you create this slanted diagram, you know, this slanted coordinate system here with IR up at an angle theta and I theta up at an angle? Well, you can think of it as aligning IR and I theta along X and Y and then tilting it by an angle theta, okay? So, this angle here must also be theta, all right? So we have, now we can express the unit vectors IR and I theta in terms of I and J. IR is cosine theta I plus sine theta J and I theta is going to be negative sine theta i plus cosine theta j. And we get that from the geometry of this picture. So what we're doing is we're creating a right triangle here with the hypotenuse of length, whatever, well, the magnitude of ir is, which is 1 because it's a unit vector, right? So the x component is given by cosine, the y component is given by sine, and the same for i theta. However, our angle is up here, so now sine gives us the x component and is negative, so we have a negative sine in front, and a positive y component given by cosine for i theta. Okay, now I need to find the rate at which i r and i change and i theta change with respect to time. But looking at i r and i theta, I see that they depend on theta. So, if I take the rate, that IR, for example, changes with respect to theta, and I multiply that rate by how fast theta changes with respect to time, that gives me how fast IR changes with respect to time. So, to differentiate cosine I plus sine J, right, we just differentiate the components because the unit vectors in Cartesian do not depend on time. So if you're in a coordinate system, where the unit vectors depend on time, to take the derivative of these unit vectors, okay, you'd want to then express the unit vectors in terms of unit vectors that don't depend on time to ease the calculation. So if you do path coordinate, um, a path coordinate derivation for velocity and acceleration, then you'd want to do a similar sort of thing. Okay, so dir over d theta is negative sine theta plus cosine theta. J. Okay, so negative sine theta, we have to multiply that by the unit vector i plus the cosine theta j. Do not leave out the unit vectors um, like I almost did verbally right there. That would be a big no no. Okay, and now we multiply this by the unknown rate d theta dt, which we have to leave in there. By the way, when I say d theta dt, I don't mean d theta times dt, I mean the derivative of theta with respect to time. It's just a bad habit that I've gotten into listening to a bunch of physics lectures. Okay. 
And now that is equal to, well, this quantity in brackets is just I theta. So I write I theta, the derivative of theta with respect to time. Good. And now I can do the same for I theta. Take the derivative of I theta with respect to time. Do it on your own, okay? I don't got to do all the work here. Um, so it's not that bad, but you'll find that it's negative IR this time. D theta DT. Okay. So hopefully you're able to show that as well. And on the exam, for example, you'd have to show that, okay? So now, we want velocity, which is the derivative of position with respect to time, and acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity. We get the velocity, then we get the acceleration. So in polar coordinates, the position of this point R, okay, the position of this point R, well, let me rephrase that. That point, that black dot there, which I'm now highlighting, is labeled by a position vector r, which points from the origin to this point. Okay? I'm going to call that vector r. In polar coordinates, it has a magnitude of r, and it points in the ir direction. Okay. So that's where we start. The position vector r is equal to r i r. The derivative with respect to time of r, which is r i r, gives us our velocity. And don't do that. What I just did, don't do that. Don't write a vector sign over r and i r. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. This is velocity. And notice this is a product of two functions of time. R is a function of time, sure. You know, just consider some arbitrary motion. The radial position with respect to the origin can change over time. And so can this IR vector since it's defined a point from the origin to where the point is, right? So we hit the derivative on the first term and leave the second term alone. And then we say plus. We take the first term, we leave it alone, we hit the derivative on the second term. Now, from up above, all right, we have two terms. The first term's fine. There's no more simplifications. The second term, well, we want to know what direction that points in. What direction does dir over dt point in? Okay. We go back up to our result. We find it points in the i theta direction with the magnitude d theta over dt. Okay. So this is equal to, just copy the first term, and then write the second, replacing the derivative here, i theta. Boy, I'm looking, making a lot of mistakes tonight. This is not good. OK. So now we have velocity, and that's it. You can put it in a nice box. Um, you can also write d theta over dt in its more concise form, which is just omega, if you'd like. Or not. Okay. So, continuing. Acceleration is the time derivative of velocity with respect to time. So, we've got to take the time derivative of this whole function, which contains of a sum of two terms, and each term is a product, the first term being a product of two things. The second term is a product with three members involved, okay? So let's just apply the product rule to the first one, the first term here, okay? Oh, well, this whole first term. Okay, you see that? All right. Now, let's apply the product rule. We hit the first, we hit the derivative on the first term leave the second term alone. Plus, we keep the first term there the way it is. We hit the derivative on the second term. We'll get the derivative of i r with respect to time. Okay. The derivative of i r with respect to time we know is i theta d theta dt. So let's write that d theta dt first and then the i theta. Now the second term, a product with three members. Okay. So, 
Extending the product rule to a product of three members is actually quite easy. And here's how it goes. You hit the derivative on the first term. Leave the other two terms alone. Then, you start with that original expression. You write the first term, leave it alone, hit the derivative on the second term. I feed off. Then, starting with this original term, you leave the first two terms alone, and you hit the derivative on the third term, giving you the derivative of i theta with respect to time. Let's write that off to the side. All right, and from earlier in our setup, we said that's equal to negative i r d theta over d t. So combining, multiplying that to r d theta over d t, that gives us a minus sign out in front. So let's put that there. Okay. And now this d theta over dt term, it's going to get squared. All right. This is not the same thing as taking the second derivative. This is evaluating the first derivative of theta. All right. And then squaring it. It's not the same as taking two derivatives. All righty. And then we have the AIR. Okay. Now I just take my acceleration result and I stick together all the terms that have i r, I stick together all the terms that have i theta. What do I mean by stick together? Well, that's not a very good way to say it. So, I got this term which has an i r in it. I have this term which has an i r in it. Those are the only two. So if I factor out an i r, okay, the first term will be t2 r over dt twice plus second term R, well, there's a minus sign. Don't forget the minus sign. Don't forget the minus sign. Alrighty. They both have IR in it, so I write it like that. Now the second term. New color. We got this one. We got this one. We got this one. All have I theta in it, okay? Notice that the first two, this one and this one, are exactly the same. So I just write 2 dr dt d theta dt plus the third term r d2 theta dt twice all times i theta. Yeah, so there you go. I checked through every one of my students sort of first, second, third, whatever run through of this derivation. And here are the things that I saw people missed a lot. Okay, first of all, they didn't put vector signs over IR and I theta. Okay, always put those nice big arrows over there. Don't make it look like you're dotting the I with the vector sign either. That's confusing. Be very careful. Everywhere, right? Even when you take a derivative of it. Even, right, even uh, this term here, right, di theta dt, put that vector sign there. Another big mistake I saw, you didn't draw any pictures. The derivation strictly comes from the picture in the beginning. If you don't draw a picture, then we have no idea what you define as theta, what you define as r, whether or not you're actually using a point in the first quadrant Right? Oh, your answer depends on all those things. So you got to have it there. Okay. And just one thing. You don't have to put this, but please, please strongly consider drawing a separate picture with I, R, and I, theta like this. Okay. Up, so not like this, or like, like this up at an angle. Okay. And that shows that you definitely know where the trigonometry comes from that gives you I, R, and I, theta. Okay. So, yeah. Lastly, I didn't show it, but you'd also want to show why d i theta over dt is negative i r d theta dt. Otherwise, so show that. Show this is true. Otherwise, everything on here is exactly what you need to solve the derivation for the exam. Okay, and also you can also write this second derivative as alpha if you'd like in your in your work. It's fine. Okay, bye. Good luck.